Beauty of the Old Mysteries. Treasure number 1782. Celadon toad-shaped inkstone with paste-on-paste -paste design. Treasure number 1783. Celadon prunus vase with inlaid chrysanthemum, peony, willow, heron, and bamboo design and bamboo strip. Treasure number 1784. Celadon prunus vase with incised lotus and branch design and bamboo strip. These are artifacts found in archaeological site of Tan Shipwreck and Mado Shipwreck number 2. Underwater archaeology is the archaeology which brings the life back to forgotten treasures underwater. There are people who jump into the ocean for the treasures underwater. Now, here we are to meet the world of underwater archaeology. Underwater Archaeology Team, searching for forgotten treasures. Located in Mopo, the National Research Institute of Maritime Cultural Heritage is responsible for underwater archaeological excavation, conservation of the findings, and research projects of Korea. You can imagine the importance of National Research Institute of Maritime Cultural Heritage as it is the one and only institution for underwater archaeological excavation. Compared to the number of institutions conducting archaeological excavation on land. Underwater Archaeology Team of Korea performs the core tasks at National Research Institute of Maritime Cultural Heritage. Archaeological excavation of underwater cultural heritage first begins with exploration of the archaeological site. The high-tech equipment is applied, but a visual verification of the site in person is a must. Archaeological excavation only begins after the confirmation of the presence of relics. The types of the artifacts, their quantity, distribution pattern, and other data are examined beforehand. The findings are lifted onto the ship exclusive for underwater archaeology and then transferred to Conservation Laboratory at the Institute for Conservation and Restoration. Writing scholarly reports and publishing archaeological work are all core tasks of underwater archaeology team. So, when did the history of Korean underwater archaeology first begin? The finding of Shinan Shipwreck in 1976 opened the horizon of Korean underwater archaeology. The archaeological excavation of the trading vessel which traveled between China and Japan was the cornerstone of underwater archaeology of Korea. And it is internationally recognized as one of the greatest findings of underwater exploration. Since the excavation of Shinan Shipwreck, the underwater archaeology of Korea was followed by the substantial development and growth. Wando Shipwreck found in 1983 was the first Korean Celadon transporting vessel from Goryeo Dynasty and it represented the significant historical value. The project at Pogunsan Islands in early 2000s was the first independent excavation without the help of the National Navy Force. The project at Mado Sea area in Taeyeon took a few years. During the project, four vessels of the Koryo Dynasty and Joseon Dynasty, including a cargo vessel, were discovered and it attracted great academic interest. The finding of Yonghungdo shipwreck had historical significance as it was the first vessel from unified Chila dynasty. Since the Shinan shipwreck excavation, underwater archaeology team has made every endeavor and the team has discovered innumerable artifacts and features sleeping deep down the water. 
All the experiences gained during the projects enable the establishment of distinctive research system and has possessed capability of working independently. As a result, we have managed to recover 14 shipwrecks and over 120,000 pieces of artifacts and introduce them to the world outside the water. Research technology for underwater cultural heritage is evolving along with the advancement of marine science technology. And the efforts made to achieve higher technological advancement is an ongoing process. Overcoming the tough underwater environment of Korea has always been a difficult task. Especially the pressure of working in the underwater environment with strong tidal current of the Western Sea, where the ancient shipwrecks are often found, were threatening yet unavoidable. The low visibility due to thick sediments risks the lives of the team from time to time, but it is a condition to overcome. The work has been challenging to every member in the team, but the pride they gained from making contribution to the history of underwater archaeology kept them going. Korea promotes diverse international exchanges with overseas institutions for advancement of research and development of underwater cultural heritage. National Research Institute of Maritime Cultural Heritage is enthusiastic about international exchanges and we make visits or attend training programs globally. Furthermore, we are building our reputation by holding international symposiums. The Korean Peninsula is surrounded by seas on three sides and we have great potential of growth in underwater archaeology. Therefore, considerable amount of investment are made to the field of underwater archaeology. Running a self-built research vessel with high-tech equipment, which is exclusive for underwater archaeology, is one good example. The advancing technology supports the researchers and divers to work under risky environments. The underwater archaeology of Korea is ready to take a step further, based on what has been accomplished so far. The Republic of Korea offers the new paradigm for cultural heritage research underwater and is willing to be part of underwater cultural heritage protection.